Welcome to proofreading and self-editing. What we want to do is support your communication skills, which are important. Communication is 25% of the module grading assessment for PIC 1. So what I'd like to do today is provide a definition of proofreading and self-editing. I'd like to suggest a range of techniques and strategies to support proofreading. And I'd like you to start thinking about your own personal process, how you might proofread. So first of all, what is proofreading? Well, proofreading is looking at your work, your written work, after you've written it. This helps you spot errors, both at a mechanical level, the level of spelling and punctuation, and at a higher level. For example, your fluency of English, the use of any academic phrases, or how well you've expressed your ideas. You should proofread because it supports your communication skills. If you are worried about your spelling, your grammar, or general fluency of English, then closely looking at your work, proofreading your work carefully, will help you get good grades. And proofreading can also help you to be more creative when you're writing. Because often, especially if you're aware that you have issues with, say, spelling, you feel that writing is difficult. However, if you proofread carefully, you catch the errors at the, that stage, that means when you're actually writing, it can become a more creative process, a slightly freer process. So that's why you should proofread. And now let's look why you should self-edit. Well, without self-editing skills, proofreading doesn't mean very much because it's no use being able to spot your mistakes if you don't then correct them. So it's a two-way process, proofreading and self-editing. We'll look at some strategies now, and one excellent strategy to support proofreading is to read your work out loud. Now you can do this by yourself, with a friend, or you can use something called assistive technology. And here I would direct you to student services because they have a program on their um, computers called Claro Read. And this is something that will read your work back to you, read it out loud. And it's also possible to download apps for this. Um, Google also has a reading service. So have a think which strategy you think might be most useful and which ones you might try on. second tip is when you're proofreading, read the words and don't worry about the meaning if you're looking for problems with spelling and punctuation. Because then you are taking the word out of its context and it makes it easier to spot any errors. It distances you from your text. So some people, when they're proofreading on a word level, they use a ruler and they move it down the page and others will cut a small square in a piece of paper so they're only seeing a small proportion of the text at a time. Our advice is don't rely on spelling checkers, especially the free ones that are built into programmes such as Word. Now they can be great tools, but they are not foolproof and their suggestions always need to be evaluated through your own brain because they don't, for example, pick up homonyms. So the example I've got here, checkers, that would pass on a spell check because checkers is the correct spelling of the word, even though within this sentence it is spelt incorrectly. And the same applies for online grammar checkers. Some of these can be quite useful, but you still need to check them for sense of suggestions. Circle every punctuation mark. If you're proofreading on a word level for punctuation, then go through your document circling each punctuation mark. This way you can approach each one out of context and that does help you spot any errors. Sometimes it can be helpful to change the look of your document. So perhaps try changing the colour, the font or the layout. And again, this works on the same principle. It distances you from the text and helps you see the words out of context and spot errors. Now we're going to stop here and move to a second video. So have a think about that. Have a think about those strategies, which one think you might work for you. And then I'm going to introduce you to a proofreading wheel.
that we use here, um, which is a suggested um, suggestions on how you could proofread for one kind of error at each time. Thank you.